Welcome everybody and good afternoon. Um, and welcome to this webinar called Is Cyber Tourism the New Norm? And uh, before we start, I'd like to introduce myself for those who don't know me. I'm Mark Bujeya, I'm the managing partner of Grant Thornton. And I have been uh, asked to moderate this session, which I believe is going to be very interesting because as you as you know, tourism is a very important pillar of our economy. Um, as you may know, this webinar is one of a series of 18 webinars which Grant Thornton is organizing over these past three weeks. The first day is today, so we have today, tomorrow and Thursday this week, same next week and same the following week. It's a total of 18 webinars and um, uh, varying topics under three categories, economic, social and environmental. There will be two sessions each and roughly each session will be of about 45 minutes. And we have a very interesting lineup line of speakers in all, in all the webinars. But today I need to focus obviously on the topic we have. And um, as you can see on the screen, our panelists, we have Mr. Franco Grek, who is the co-founder and CEO at Shortlets Malta and Luxury Villas Malta. We have Mr. Johan Butigic, who is the CEO at the Malta Tourism Authority. We have notary Charles Manjon, Chairman of Air Malta, and we have Mr. Joseph Fenech, who is the joint CEO at International Hotel Investments, which is an international hotel chain forming part of the Corinthia Group. So I would like to thank these gentlemen, first of all, for finding the time to slot us in uh, in their busy schedule, and I'm sure that they will give us some interesting insights about their the sector from different angles, of course, because as you can see, we're covering practically all the bases here as far as um, between the 9th and the 19th of June, Grant Thornton conducted a nationwide survey called Shaping Malta's Future, the Emergence of a New Norm. And the survey found the findings, um, as we expected, gave us some interesting insight um, about all the, the topics we will be covering in the webinars. Obviously, today, for the purposes of this session, I will be only using those parts of the survey results which are pertinent to the topic being being uh, discussed. So as we go along, we will be um, I will be sharing some uh, the slides on screen and then the gentlemen who have who will be on the panel will will give us their views depending on their sector. So um, and finally, before we start, um, apart from it, uh, um, uh, thanking all those who have registered and are participating in this webinar, I kindly ask you to send any questions you have on the chat so that I will be able to um, direct the questions at an opportune moment to the most appropriate person on the panel. So with that, I think we can kick off. Um, I will start with Mr. Fenech and ask him about the impact that we have um, on uh, that the pandemic has had and is having on the catering, leisure and tourism industry. The slides which we can see um, gives us some interesting findings that affect the sector. Joe, a lot of people are saying that this pandemic has brought about a lot of peace and quiet, a lot of peace and quiet. Um, uh, in Malta, less traffic, but at what cost has this been achieved? Well, Mark, um, looking at those lines or, or at this first slide that you are putting here, it's very alarming. The percentages are high, but I believe one needs to read it in terms of the context when that survey was conducted. If I recall you mentioning, well, it was held in the first half of June, 9th yeah. to the 19th, um, where there was still a certain hesitation. People were still afraid and we, we were at the initial stage of the relaxation of the measures. Thankfully, as time passed by and notwithstanding the very many um, bad publicity or, or concerns that were expressed that when we opened restaurants, the uh, number of COVID cases will increase. Then again, we passed that successfully. 
come 1st of July, the airport opened. Thankfully, I mean, we have had successive days with zero COVID new cases. So I think it's a situation where obviously it is not going to be business as usual and it will take time. But it is something, it's a new norm that we have to learn to live with. OK, OK, so um, I mean, it's it's um, it is encouraging, obviously, that possibly the the uh, actual situation is not as alarming as these figures are indicating. But obviously, it's still early days. Let's just hope that it will continue to, to um, Joe, and another question. I mean, I, I am going to take this opportunity, even though the 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 uh, the webinar is focused on Malta, but I do, I think we shouldn't miss this opportunity that we have you on the call, knowing that Corinthia Group has a number of uh, operations outside of Malta. What is the situation in those countries? I mean, in general terms. Well, again, I mean, over here we have from a health and safety point of view, we are lucky because we are insular because we are an island. But by itself, that also brings certain limitation and that the domestic market is what it is. And tourism and the way that the industry has been built has not been built on the local market, but more so um, on the international tourist arrivals. Mm -hmm. In Europe, there is an advantage. If you were to take continental Europe, you don't have the limitations of air travel and the like. So be it hotels in the Czech Republic, be it hotels in, uh, in Hungary. If you have visitors from Germany, I mean, if um, Germans are afraid because of COVID to travel by air, they, all, they always have the ability to travel um on land yeah, yeah you have a similar situation of island sort of situation the uk which would perhaps be a more appropriate um comparative in the uk um we opened on the 4th of july and the uk is still very much in the midst of uh, the covid pandemic it was one of the last countries in europe which was affected and it is obviously the last one which is coming out of it. But there are some encouraging signs. I mean, for example, I mean, we have four penthouse. I mean, the likes of Johnny Depp. I mean, a tycoon, a Norwegian tycoon selling salmon. I mean, these are um, sweets selling at 9,000 a night. So, yes, I mean, it's a silver lining, but and it's not um, all behind us. But yes, yes. At least there is a beginning. Good, good, good. That's that's encouraging. And I think even hearing, you know, and speaking to other people from other sectors, I think that is the general feeling. Oh, it's a it's a start. You know, it's a slow start, but it's a start. So, um, uh, Joe, I'm 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 going to to change the the slide for a minute. And in particular, I would like to ask you regarding the demand from the internal market. As we can see from this slide, we have 27% um, of respondents said that they would consider staying at a hotel in Malta instead of traveling. Obviously, now the numbers, as you said, were taken about three weeks ago. It, this might change, but in terms of your preparations How are you looking at the internal market as giving you a you know a sizable well at least sizable a part of the business that has been lost well it would be foolish if there is a market to be tapped into and one ignores it um i caveat that by saying that there is certain discounting happening because obviously again you have to acknowledge the reality of the situation but we're not going for um, a marketing strategy where to fill the rooms. We are discounting rates at whatever level. So we have five star properties. We need to protect the property. So yes, conscious of the fact of the market situation as is, but without damping rates. 
And again, I mean, we have five properties. If you were to try and sectionalize them, I mean, we have one property which is in the northern part of Morda, three on the St. Julian's promontory, and one um, in uh, the center of Morda near the presidential palace. If it is golden sense to take a case in point, it has always been very popular with the local market, especially for weekend breaks. There is a sizable um, amount of Maltese timeshare owners. We opened on the 26th of June to anticipate the long um, Santa um, Imnaria weekend. We were, our expectations were exceeded. We are running at 50% occupancy, which is much higher than what we expected. In the case of the St. Julian's Promontory, the three hotels, we have adopted a different strategy altogether. It doesn't make sense to open three hotels and register 15, 20% occupancy in each hotel. So what we have done, we have always maintained the Corinthia San George open, even during the COVID period, because we had always some 20 to 30 rooms occupied. And what we are doing is we have the three reservation systems operating independently, accepting bookings, but then redirecting all bookings to the Corinthia San George because there is a norm in the industry and in the, in the hotel hospitality industry, and also in the case of the airline industry, that if um, accommodation is not available at that hotel, you have to provide accommodation in a similar hotel or a superior hotel. So we kept the most superior property, the Corinthia San George open, and bookings at the Redison Bay Point, and bookings at the marina are all being channeled through cool. the Corinthia San George. By so doing, we are augmenting um, the occupancy at Corinthia San George and minimizing the operating cost because whilst for the time being there is the COVID supplement in due course this will have to be scaled down and eventually um, removed and as occupancy starts to build up will open a second hotel will open a third hotel so that is the strategy that we have been using locally Joe, thank you very, very much. That was very interesting. Um, I'm sure that the attendees are um, will appreciate these uh, candid views which which are being shared. So thank you, Joe, once again. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share them. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, OK, I'll now pass on to to Johan. Um, uh, Johan, who is the CEO of the MTA, I'm sure that he has lots of <laughs> um, problems on his plate because obviously, as we said, tourism, because of the importance it has to for Malta, it's a really, really, you know, um, strategic uh, function which MTA has and the role they play. Johan, so um, again, thank you once again for joining us. Um, there, there has been um, the need because of the, the pandemic and the situation which has developed, that everybody has to look necessarily to the internal market. So the obvious, the obvious um, choice is uh, the obvious direction has to be, you know, you replace the foreign market to the as much as possible with the internal market. Um, the the slide, which is on screen at the moment. Um, is indicating that um, they, there are um, a lot of a lot of people who are still uh, appear to be wary to travel, and therefore there is an opportunity because it creates an internal demand. At the same time, uh, we know that a lot of people are still, at least from the survey, reluctant to to visit indoor indoor. Um, so let's start with the internal, the internal numbers, uh, the internal market. Johan, uh, how, what are your thoughts on this, and how is the, the authority speaking up for this challenge and gearing up? So, well, thank you for the invitation. 
Uh, Thank you. Uh, I, I would not like to, to mention problems. I always, I always <laughs> like to say that we have challenges rather than problems. Exactly. Yes, and, they, the and they create opportunities. Opportunities as well. So, um, as uh, Joe well mentioned, um, this COVID issue is evolving such at a, at a very fast rate that I would say it is an under those of what has happened in March. In March, it was like the collapse of the total market, and now it is the regeneration of that same market. So it was very fast to collapse, and I would imagine that it will be faster than we think it will, it will, it will regenerate itself. So uh, up to two weeks ago, when this survey was being carried out, uh, many people still thought that Malta would open up its doors in September or even October. And now we're speaking about, uh, actually, we've opened the airport and uh, on the 15th, we will be opening further countries uh, <coughs> to accept further incoming tourism. I, w I would say that um, from what we have, is um, totally different from our end. Um, people are ready to actually um, visit restaurants. We have experienced this over the past weekend and the weekend before. Gozo from its end, it's almost totally fully booked. Um, we have niche areas that are still suffering and suffering severely mainly those in the capital city. And that is why we have actually launched a particular program for that. Uh, but up till now, this hasn't uh, given the impetus that we were uh, expecting to give uh, to, to the area of Valletta. But also, uh, I would say that from as of, as of yesterday, uh, we have the first signs of tourists roaming around even Valletta. So these are obviously um, the good uh, indications that things are slowly, slowly picking up. What I can say is that um, we have uh, the airlines up to two weeks ago, we're looking at a load factor of 40%. Today we are looking at load factors of approximately 70%. Um, Flights we have for the first two weeks, we have between 12 flights and 21 flights per day. After the 15th, we will be receiving between 14 and 36 flights per day. So that is almost double what we have uh, this week. So uh, in the first five days, we have received about uh, 8,000 incoming air travelers and about 2,000 uh, 500 um, travelers by catamaran. So actually, we are looking that those will double um, over over the next uh, week or so. Um, as we said, our target uh, is the 700,000 persons uh, coming uh, to Malta um, to spend their holidays. This month alone, we are looking at the region of having incoming uh, travelers of ar around 100,000, 25% of which would always be uh, those that are uh, obviously returning um, from abroad, people that are related more to work rather than uh, tourists and so on. So we are looking at this industry in a, in a positive manner. And also, obviously, we have started now to work post uh, October. Um, what are we going to incentivize the industry to ensure not rather than the industry but also to attract even more foreigners to come to Malta? Very, very interesting. The numbers are encouraging, therefore. I mean, the as, as Joe said in his first intervention, I mean, we have to bear in mind that the results we have in front of us were taken uh, about a month ago. And obviously, in the situation, the more time passes, situation hopefully will continue to improve. Uh, Mohan, just one, one observation. The finding we shared regarding the attendance at restaurants 
it's regarding indoor restaurants. Yes. And my question was going to be, um, if that is the case, um, obviously, post-summer, the problem is going to be bigger because at the moment, a lot of restaurants in Malta have outside facilities and people appear to be more comfortable. So you're seeing the trend that the restaurants are doing quite well, even on those who are on the indoor. Um, yes, yes, there are there are a, a good number of restaurants that indoor are still doing very well. Uh, but obviously we have quite a good uh, mild um, weather comparatively to other countries. And I'm sure that up to November uh, we would still use the outdoor areas. Um, today uh, there are so many measures one can use to actually still make sure that the person is comfortable. Okay, okay. No, because obviously then when the winter months come, apart from the, that the numbers normally go down anyway, um, but obviously, but but it's it's good. Johan, um, slightly diverting, slightly from the main the main topic. Um, I know that um, apart from the emphasis on internal tourism, we know that the authority um, has continued to to heavily invest in advertising outside of Malta during the pandemic. And if I'm not mistaken, I read somewhere recently that it was one of the few countries who has actually advertised heavily uh, during the pandemic. It was a bold, obviously. I would not say we have, comparatively to other countries, we have uh, still uh, remained quite evidently uh, there. I yeah, would not okay. say that we have invested heavily. Okay. Um, okay. Even the rates that we, we managed to get uh, for those advertisements was, was a very good. Very good. Uh, okay, okay. But uh, obviously, still it was a bold decision because it was basically you are, you know, advertising at a time when there was a lot of uncertainty. And so, what what is what results are you expecting from this investment? I mean, I know that what you've told us is encouraging that the numbers are. What, what, I, what I can say, what I can say, for example, uh, we have a very good um, visibility of of the searches. Um, People, people outside Malta um, make on um, the flight industry, for example. We have um, we have seen that from Austria and Germany, the number of searches on Malta has actually exceeded that of the last over last year. And normally, when you look at the airline industry, uh, there is a correlation on the number of bookings vis-a-vis -vis the number of searches. Okay. So we're expecting. Uh, a number of, um, you know, better numbers than we, than possibly we had uh, comparatively last year. So uh, we are we, this year we're looking to have one third of, of um, the, the figures we had last year, seven hundred thousand okay. of the two point nine million. Okay. So comparatively, we would still think that from Germany and from Austria, the figures would be higher than the one third. Uh, from the UK, for example, uh, la last weekend, when you compare it with the last week, with the same weekend in 2019, we have exceeded also the number of the number of bookings, uh, the actual bookings that that, that that actually took place. So uh, we are we, we are convinced that um, things will be picking up, picking up at quite a good pace. And hopefully we will manage to reach the targets that we have. Adopted. Very good. Thank you, Johan. <clears throat> Very interesting. And thanks again for your contribution. Um, the airline, <laughs> probably one of the um, most people in Malta who's been scratching his head in these past months, I would say. Um, notary, so you are currently leading uh, one of the leading pillars uh, which 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 on which our tourism industry is based there Malta um as, as we've seen on the on the slide 76 percent do not intend to travel abroad now obviously um I know that Air Malta depends on both outgoing and incoming um uh, travel how how are you 
preparing for this? I mean, in terms of an airline with all the problems which such numbers bring about. Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the for the invitation. Um, I think everyone, more or less, we are on the same plane like the other previous speakers. But uh, I think everyone agrees that the uh, aviation industry has taken the hardest hit um, in this uh, pandemic, and with it, obviously, the uh, the accommodation and then the hotel, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, industry. Um, our March to June figures more or less complement uh, the 79% of the respondents who feel uncomfortable um, traveling abroad or um, uh, the, fig the high figure that you mentioned. In actual fact, we experienced that uh, about a 92% of a drop between March and early June. Um, and uh, when we compare the previous uh, crisis, for example, the financial crisis of 2008 and the SARS crisis in 2002-2004 and the 2011 terrorist attack, which were three landmarks in the aviation history, I mean recent uh, history, uh, the setback or the dip was about 30%. I'm mentioning this so that one understands a little bit the reality, the new norm or the reality of the situation. It however, comes. however, um, uh, as a Malta, we concentrate more on incoming tourism, but since we expand our connectivity, especially um, uh, B2B um, and uh, direct connectivity with other the main uh, capitals of Europe, that also helps the locals to find more uh, traveling, uh, traveling abroad. And one thing that very few, I think, really, really are aware of it, we have a lot of, a uh, lot about 15 to 16 co-chair agreements with the leading airlines like the Lufthansa, the Alitalia, Qatar, Emirates, uh, and so on. And these allow Air Malta to connect to 200 uh, countries abroad. Therefore, the connectivity, even for the locals, although we, as, as I said, our more, we concentrate more on incoming tourism for obvious reasons. But again, through our expansion in that respect and our culture agreements, we connect even the locals practically to the four or to, to all the continents, the five continents uh, around the world. And uh, what we are observing in spite of that setback, as I said, of about 92% up to the middle of June, uh, once we started on the 1st of July, and I'm looking for when we expand further on the 15th of July, but the initial reaction was quite positive. In actual fact, for July and, uh, and August, these two months, um, and I will explain why, we have about 90,000 bookings already, which is uh, about 30% of the pre-COVID situation in uh, July, August 2019. Outgoing. Outgoing. Incoming, 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 incoming the bookings. But there is some outgoing as well. Part of it is, uh, is, is will be outgoing. And once the UK uh, opens and uh, then more openings, obviously the outgoing will grow. But as I said, I'm more, we are more concentrating on the incoming and its um, uh, spillover effect that will have on, on, on the economy. Therefore, one uh, I look at things a little bit um, optimistically and uh, the bookings are late bookings. Why? From the data that we have collated, um, there is a drive abroad for uh, for what we call uh, staycations. What the staycations mean people are encouraged to stay in their respective country. Therefore, every country advertises having a, a, an internal um, economy of scale encourages its people to spend their holidays there. This is something that it, it, it is um, all our travel agents and so I are feeling as well. And uh, that's one thing. Again, taking into account that uh, some people have had to and are still and during a haircut in their in their uh, salaries or in their in their income. And some of them have lost uh, their jobs as well. Therefore, all these elements and with a little bit of a struggling economy everywhere, 
and one has to understand that the aptitude for mm. people to travel, I would believe, will remain. But obviously, it will um, the priorities for traveling will change um, a little bit, and that is something I think that we have to accept and we have to address. Why do I say we have to address? Because um, obviously, if we are competing with people staying within their own country to spend mm. the holiday there, in order to attract them to come to Malta, taking um, uh, taking Malta obviously because that's our main focus, one has to provide them with a, a new product, a more dynamic product or a personalized product, but uh, but at a very competitive price. And this is one of the um, uh, objectives and the initiatives that we that Air Malta has undertaken. Our Air Malta holidays, for example, it's a virtual um, uh, holiday uh, model. We try to combine both hotel accommodations with the with the ticket and the travel and practically give a very good price. And um, from this point of view, I would like to thank all the hoteliers and even people with other property, accommodation property that uh, are collaborating with us for their own good, but also it helps us provide more dynamic packaging for 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 clients, product development to attract them to come to spend the holiday because it pays coming to Malta and enjoying what uh, what Malta can can offer as a holiday destination, but obviously enticing them because um, because the package is good, enticing them because the prices are competitive, enticing them because they are getting good um, accommodation, good services, but a very at a very competitive price. I mean, price has been um, uh, an element in the aviation industry, and I think during this COVID mm. period and uh, in the foreseeable future, it will it will continue. It will continue to be also a very important element. Together with that, obviously, one has to include the services from our end, the on-time performance that we we are timely. Um, how our um, uh, crew, the cabin crew, how they react and interact with the with the clients, and in that respect, I'm very much satisfied from past experience, and so on and so forth. And obviously, um, all these combination of these uh, these elements will impact not only on the airline they will impact on the airline because if people come to Malta will our seats uh, will be filled up and will uh, will increase our our revenue but uh, but uh, obviously I mean it will have uh, the effect on on our economy within the tourism industry and within also the e-gaming and the and the financial services I would like to make uh, to underline this remark that the first um, bookings that we had and the first uh, travelers that came were what we call visiting friends and relatives for because of people working here in Malta on a, on a more permanent basis, meaning even foreigners and uh, uh, and also in the e-gaming and the financial services industry, but also for hotels and uh, other leisure accommodation that is picking up. Why am I stating this? Because it seems that the uh, movement, the positive movement is not only within the tourism and leisure industry, but also within other sectors of the economy. And therefore, that is also um, important um, from a more macro um, point, point of view. Um, uh, therefore, this is what we are doing within the airline. Obviously, apart from our smoothing out and working out our for industrial relations and uh, I look forward also to conclude in a more positive way also with the cockpit with the pilots. Uh, we are still undergoing discussions there, um, but uh, we are looking very much at the commercial side product development now for the new for the new norm and also how to enhance our distribution and penetration on the on the on the social media. And we are investing a lot in those three areas because um, that is what the industry is demanding. People, uh, therefore, we are looking at a new booking engine, new website and app, all these sort of things. Um, those that we have will be enhanced and, and replaced by more efficient ones, more client friendly ones and so on and so forth. Because all these um, initiatives taken up together 
will have definitely um, an impact on uh, on our bookings and on our even on our on our revenue and in the in the end on our um, economy as uh, the tourism um, as the tour incoming tourism will grow. Notar, thank you very much. Um, I think we have touched upon all the points which I wanted to ask because even the business model you've touched upon because obviously this this uh, pandemic has brought to the need to update the business processes and to be has brought them more to the fore. Uh, maybe you know some organizations uh, are are forced now to to do certain things. So so thank you very much for the contribution. Greatly appreciated. Um, last but not last but not least, um, I would like to touch upon now the the shortlets and the luxury villas market. And this is why we have asked Franco Grec, um, who, as I said in the introduction, is from the um, short shortlets and uh, and um, villa market. To, to give us his views, Franco. Um, this slide I had, I, I am sharing now. Um, actually, I don't know. Maybe initially, um, maybe a bit alarming in the sense that we have forty-seven percent um, who do not appear to be in to, to be interested in using. Uh, local accommodation instead of their holidays, of course. So we are lo looking at a situation where you have less incoming visitors and the, the market of, of, of the, the, the local market seems to be a bit um, reluctant to move. But there are there's also a sizable 35 percent who seem to be interested in using farmhouses or properties, etc. How are you looking at the situation in the short -less market developing Franco? Yes, and good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. Um, I think when it comes to short lets, um, for example, our company we manage 150 properties, which range from luxury villas in Santa Maria State to studio apartments in Valletta in the city. Now, when we talk about um, the villas, the villas, to be fair, they have been a bit immune to the pandemic situation because. Um, when it happened in March, of course, the booking were cancelled, but we got a lot of demand from locals wanting to, you know, self-isolate the villa. So the demand was very high there. As soon as it, um, sort of the demand, uh, you know, the situation became better, we've seen many, many locals wanting to go for short breaks. We're talking two days, three days in the weekends, but also during the week. And those were talking for the villas. So there, I think um, the demand has been quite healthy. We cannot say the same for um, uh, apartments in the city. You know, we're talking about studios, one bedrooms in the cities. They are performing badly. So, um, so what? Um, uh, you know, the villas. Um, we have penthouses with outdoor areas, with pools, with jacuzzi. Those are doing quite well. Again, you know, people are looking for outer space. And you know, generally the idea of holiday, you know, and um, so a pool it goes with holiday, you know, a one bedroom in Valletta doesn't scream holiday. Now the tourism open. So now we're seeing that the airport is open and we are getting bookings. Now we're getting bookings from um tourists wanting to come here. The trends seems to follow the same thing. So what we're seeing is people wanting to book more villas more um, uh, places with outdoor space. So um, they are going for longer holidays. We noticed that and they are spending quite a lot of money because the villas are not cheap. Some go for a thousand euros a day and they are booking for 10 days, 15 days. So we're seeing quite a lot of um, large transactions when it comes to, to, to villas. The demand for the villas is strong. I think it will be the only section that we will not have a problem with, which is incredible, with um, uh, with occupancy levels, so I think even the money when we're talking about the night rates are not different from 2019. So we didn't go in a situation where we had to drop um, prices. Again, on on the other properties, you know, it's um, it's a disaster. It means we are going down real low on prices, but still, you know, it's the demand. It's it's not there till now. It's for the 
for the for the short let's yeah. be let's call them the apartments not not the villas yes mm. yes, no. yes for for the apartments not all apartments you know um uh, apartments who have limited or outdoor space and you know valletta is sometimes they are all limited for outdoor space and valletta in 2019 what was we considered to be at the top so from our our properties valletta was the top performing now of course it's a completely different story um, and now you know we don't even get inquiries um, for valletta uh, <clears throat> so the situation it's uh, it's a bit um, like it is expected you know because very challenging, very challenging there. Yes, it's changed, but it's expected, you know, that people will want to go for uh, this particular type of, of of properties. Bookings are picking up. So um, finally, after all this time, we are seeing that bookings are picking up. Now, in the short term business, people tend to book early. So we have mm -hmm. a situation that people booked in January before all this happened. And, uh, you know, most of them canceled because there were no flights and now they can come because the airports are, are open, but still we have a problem with flights. We have many, many cancellations because still there are, even for August, you know, there are airlines canceling flights, you know, and uh, it's very, mm. it's a situation which, you know, the airports are open, they want to come, but they can't find flights, you know, they are canceling them. So, you know, cancellation will continue, even mm. though we have a situation of uh, um, where the airport is open. Mm. Um, regards, I think um, the way forward, um, as soon as the pandemic happened, we started with a campaign showing um, cleaning protocols and, you know, that um, coming to Malta is safe, our properties are safe. But we noticed an interesting thing, when people actually book or ask, um, they are not putting so much um, emphasis on the protocol. So they are asking us the size of the pool, um, uh, this, uh, how many bedrooms, the, 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 the check-in and check-out times, but um, actually what we expected, and we invested heavily in that, what we expected in terms of, you know, how much people are going to ask about, the kind of, it didn't materialize. I think people, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the kind of requests they, are, they, are, they were, it's more in line with 2000, right? People want to go, people want to have a holiday. Um, they expect it. They expect it to be clean and to be safe, but it's in the background. It's not something that is going to, you know, people are going to prefer my properties because I have a clean protocol. Um, we are noticing that, you know, the bigger pool will make a difference. So we're, with our competitors, when we're checking that, we're noticing that as well. And, you know, for example, in villas, they come in big groups, 14. One of the key protocols is, is that the host who meets them, goes with one of the members, you know, who shows them the place, but then you have 30 people out in the sun. So it's 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 very difficult to maintain um these these protocols. We are of course doing our best, but people want to come and have fun. And uh, so all this is expected, you know, you are expected to clean it. It's not something that you have to clean now because of COVID. Yes, you have to show them what's happening, but it's something that they expected from the industry. Um, so that is very important. I think, um, to be fair, one of the biggest challenges we, have, we had as short lets, um is because for many years we have been dependent on the OTAs, which are Airbnb, Booking.com. And what happened with this company, we believed a lot in this company. So basically we handed them over our business. We built our apartments and these apartments, and then we gave them to Airbnb to market them. And what we noticed when the pandemic happened, what we believed were these companies, which are um, very strong financially, they had problems like the rest of us, you know, like Airbnb, they they made 25% of their stuff redundant. They had to borrow a billion just to make it till uh, the end of the year. So it sent us a bit of a, a shockwave, you know, we're trusting these OTAs with everything. And, you know, the situation is not as good as we have imagined. And another issue was that when it came to cancellations, when it, Airbnb simply cancelled all the bookings. Now, if there are no airport, no, no place, you know, there should be cancellations. But what we noticed is um, we have 30% of all bookings coming from direct bookings. When we had a, a chain of communication with the, with the guest, we noticed that we managed to, you know, talk to the guests and to shift the booking for 2021. And it helped us a lot when it comes to cash flow.
because it's one thing getting zero money, it's one thing you know keeping the money and not having to refund clients. With the with the sites, with the booking sites, it didn't happen, you know, because they, they don't encourage communication, direct communication with, with the, the guests. So of course, you know, we ended up in a situation where the money was not coming in. And mm -hmm. money is very important because you know a company can live for years without profit, but without liquidity, it will run into into problem. Okay. And I think one of the things that we need to 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 come up with is sort of branding. You know, branding. When people think about branding, they think about you know if you have a huge hotel, if you have a thousand apartments, branding can can with one apartment. You know, if we specialize and it, it can happen. You know, and. Um, we can brand our our products and it will help us because you know what we need to get from the pandemic you know now it happened it affected everybody around the world but it, it also gave us insight what happens if next time it won't be a pandemic but it will be one of the big otas who you know for some reason stops um actually being in business and so we need to sort of change a bit our strategy and to go a bit more for an area where we have direct bookings. Communication is very important because you know people know what happened, um, the pandemic and stuff, and they know that you know by canceling the reservations they are hurting the operators. They know that, um, but of course you know they, they want their money back. But by talking to them, you know, communication it, it allows you not only to to gain loyalty because you know this, you know they trust you so much that they're coming next year. So next year, you know, they're coming and, you know, that's, it's, it's very encouraging. So I think those are the most important points we need to take um, uh, from, from take this away from Yes, yes, I think there are positive things and it gave us insight. So, and the important thing is that we have to protect ourselves so it doesn't happen again. I mean, without protect against another pandemic, even if it now we know how to react, you know, we, we know um, how things evolve. So that is, uh, it's very important. And uh, another important point I think is that um, we now realized how much communication is important, you know, because at one point business was so good in Malta, you know, we're having so much tourists, 2.6 million tourists, that, you know, we lost a bit. Um, uh, the we're, a bit idea of complacent. we're a bit complacent. Yeah. Yes, it became like a numbers game, you know, it's like, you know, I have an apartment, um, there is no even marketing, you know, from the apartment, I go directly to Airbnb and, uh, you know, where is the hotel, you know, where is the, the communication? I, I think this was like a wake up, for them, you know, that now we need to do a bit things different. It doesn't mean we, we're not going to use booking.com or Airbnb, not the case, but at least we, we, we become less reliant on, reliant on them. On the no. so, thank you, Franco. Thank you very, very much. Um, Maybe just one point. You mentioned Valletta and Johan already explained, and we know because it was part, it was in the news um, that the initiatives which are being directed at Valletta, hopefully um, they will start um, you know giving the results because it has a ripple effect on everything. Johan, it appears so it's not just the restaurants, the obvious restaurants and the bars in Valletta. From what we're hearing, even. The, the letting has been hard hit in Valletta, Johan. Yes, 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 for sure. So hopefully these initiatives will give, will give. Um, just before we, we close, we close this session, just one, uh, uh, maybe a comment from Joe. Joe, when, when, when uh, Charles was speaking about the, a lot of countries trying to keep their, their citizens in their internal market, is that creating an opportunity for Corinthia in the, in the markets where you are operating outside of Malta? Because obviously, I understand that everybody tries to keep his 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 audience captively in, in his country. Are yes, in, that so? in fact, I have already alluded to that um, with continental Europe. I mean, you don't need to solely okay. depend on air connectivity. Mm -hmm. You've got land connectivity as well. So yes, obviously charity always begins at home and there is a drive for that continuously. But no. having said that, then um, people want to move around as well. Obviously, I mean, the initial, it was shocking initially. 
now we have to find a way of operating within this environment. We had other pandemics, I mean SARS, um, foot and mouth disease, I mean 101 pandemics. It's a matter that we need to learn how to live with this new reality going forward. And from the airline perspective, Ntar, I mean, obviously, um, the reality in Malta is what it is. I mean, the the introduction of uh, low cost airlines had obviously brought about lots of advantages for the Maltese uh, sector, but obviously more challenges for El Malta. I mean, uh, hopefully we can see some some efforts being directed to encourage people to use our Malta as our national carrier. <laughs> Um, uh, let's uh, let's uh, um, face facts as they are. People look at the most competitive and efficient service, and uh, obviously uh, price uh, is a vital is a vital element. And within our within our uh, company, uh, during 2019, we introduced also a lot of uh, fair ladders, different uh, total flexibility for for our clients, and we are continuing to do so within our economy and obviously we have enhanced our business because our business our business class especially on certain routes like the heat roads the zurich the france and the some of the german routes as well and, and amsterdam are very much in demand and therefore we catered spe specifically for that category of people we do have a mix of of, of clients with uh, competing with the with the low cost from the purely touristic um, uh, destinations Yes, we are preparing um, very well for it in the sense that we might have, for example, flights with full economy, but then we will have different categories within the economy. We have, we, have, uh, we have ancillaries on board. We, we can uh, and we are, we are developing further that. To complement this, it, it has been very important that we are uh, analyzing very closely the, our fleet. What would be the best fleet number? I mean, to, to serve Malta, with um, providing capacity abroad for people to, to travel, to travel comfortably and frequently, but at the same time making sure that our aeroplanes do maximum block hours in the air, because that is the that is the whole uh, trick. It's keep an aeroplane in the air rather than on the ground. On the ground. That, <laughs> that, that is the only way to, to generate to yeah. generate revenue. Therefore, we are working well on that with our um, policy to change our, our aircraft to NEOS 3. Um, uh, 320. I mean, with the same configuration. That is also very helpful because one has to bear in mind that these are very fuel fuel efficient. They are silent, therefore there is less less sound pollution and uh, less emissions in the air, and that we will save about 17 to 20 percent on our on our running cost. Um, therefore, all these small elements will uh, will help us. Now we have revamped totally our revenue management. We have especially introduced and customized um, revenue software, software which compares all ag existing um, airlines coming flying into Malta and every hour, every hour 24 seven, it dictates what would be the best price um, uh, at any particular moment in time. And together with the, the dynamic packaging, different offers and so on, I'm sure that uh, our final our final package to the clients will be interesting. And obviously then one has to bear in mind the brand Air Malta, which is very popular on, on the continent where we have um, a, a long history of safety, a long history of um, also of people being well treated on board and uh, our our as I said, our hospitality shines, I think, and I hope it will continue to shine. We insist. We insist on that and therefore we have to enhance also our performance. That is timely performance. Uh, turnaround will be as quickly as possible, but one has to bear in mind that with the added um, uh, measures for safety, for cleanliness, that could be that would take some time, not only in Malta, but also also abroad. We are featuring um, uh, including that in our in our calculations and that will help us to to make the best scheduling time the best rostering time and to try to accommodate our our clients and give them the best flight experience at the best prices 
as well. This is, I mean, uh, the whole package that we are working hard on and facilitating also our distributions, not only for direct booking, which will be very beneficial because we'll save on commissions, uh, but, uh, but also for our travel agents, our OTAs, that 24 7 they can go into our inventory book for their clients and uh, obviously obviously um, sell our products thank you very much for that joe maybe a few last comments from your end about the general uh, situation what we've discussed how you're seeing it well um it will take time oh, I think to your, I mean, okay so sorry Obviously, um, there is cautious optimism, I must say, um, but because of certain sectors where we specialize in, particularly conference and events, leisure and the like, um, they will take longer to recover because there is also a certain lead time. But um, we are hopeful and we're doing our best and with all um the support that we get from the tourist author tourism authority the airline we are hopeful that it will be soon that we are on our way to recovery thank you joe thank you very much franco would you like to just conclude just to add anything else to add from your end on what i think I, I think um recovery is happening and it will be a slow process it will be different. You know, some businesses, some hospitality businesses will recover faster than others. So, um, but the important thing I think um, right now is that it started, you know. Um, exactly. I, I, I don't remember our first booking, but I will always remember the booking that happened after they opened the airport. So <laughs> that was something like a, a celebration here at, at the office. So um, even more odd, you know, you get bookings, you know, um, it, it's optimism, you know, you feel better and that you know things are starting to move so I, I am optimistic so very good thank you johan last word to the authority <laughs> so um uh, obviously uh, our strategy is to attract uh, the younger generation which is in the region of 18 to 55 years of age uh, there will be some areas within the industry that need to readapt uh, for their clientele, because obviously um, we have even seen a particular airline that has uh, actually stopped working to Malta because they us usually used to cater for the older uh, type of people. Um, we are very confident that we will manage to get the numbers um, and uh, most probably the numbers that we will manage to get will actually be, be numbers that actually spend even more um, to, to, to what we, we, we are used today. Hopefully, um, we are looking on a daily basis on the, at the international markets, um, how they are performing in the fight against COVID. Uh, we should always be on the alert because if there would be a huge outcrop, uh, we would be the first ones to issue necessary warnings to the industry. And also, uh, we must ensure that there are protocols in place to ensure that our safety remains the number one priority over and above anything else. Because if we are not safe, we cannot sell our country to be one of the safest places to enjoy your holidays. But, Thank you, Yo. As I always say, come and enjoy Malta. <laughs> Thank you, Johan. I, I see that you're not missing an opportunity to pro to keep promoting Walt as well. <laughs> thank you. So, gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your contributions. I believe that um, those who have been attending have really um, been, been pleased to hear that we should be surprised that the, the discussion has highlighted the challenges which the sector has been facing and it is still facing, but it also encouraging to note that there is a, as 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 Joe said, cautious optimism. Um, the numbers are you know, gradually picking up. We have to realize from where we're starting. It's not a question that one puts on 
the, the engine and everything is back to normal straight away. So there's a lead time. There's also an element of fear. A lot of it will also depend on how the pandemic will develop, not only in Malta, but also in the countries where from where we target, because unfortunately, um, this is also a but um, uh, it was I, I was also it was interesting to note as well, for example, the the um, the comments regarding our our um, findings, which possibly because of the lapse of time um, comparing, you know, we're looking at results which were gathered from data uh, three weeks ago. It appears that maybe they were too, um, let's say, too cautious at the time. And hopefully we continue seeing these gradual improvements in the market through the numbers that come in. Very encouraging as well to know that um, maybe this has brought to the fore certain problems, which in some cases could be legacy issues, like how we look at the market. For example, Franco was saying the dependency you had on Airbnb and other, other portals. Um, when something like this happens, you need to rethink and makes you more efficient and better if something else had to happen. Likewise with our Malta, bookings, maybe looking at your products again, looking at your costs again. So I think all in all, um, it's a start, a slow start, but at least it's a start. So once again, gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate your, your, your attending. We know that you all have very busy schedules. We really appreciate your support. And I thank you once again, and I, I wish you all a very good afternoon. For those who are attending, just a final reminder that we have another 16 webinars to go. Uh, the first two were today, this was the second one. We have another 16, two tomorrow, two on Thursday, and then another six, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then another, the final six, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one at 11 and one at 12. And with that, I leave you. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.